Hey guys, welcome back to channel Devkage. It has been almost a month since I posted any video to this channel. I was kind of busy in few other things, so didn't get much time to focus on new videos. But finally, last week I got some free time, which I decided to use for rewriting my Dino Run game with null safety and latest version of Flame Engine. Doing this didn't take much time, but the changes were quite significant. So I decided to make this video explaining some of those changes. But this isn't going to be one of those videos where I code everything live. I assume that you have already watched the original series and have a general idea about this project. Without wasting any more time, let's get into it. To get access to all the code that I'll be using in this video, you'll have to head over to the GitHub repository of this project, link to which will be in the description. There you'll see that rewrite is the default branch containing all the new changes. In case for some reason you want to access the old code, you can get it from the main branch. Although let me warn you that it might not work with the latest Flutter SDK and Flame Engine. Anyways, if you look at the new code, at first the whole structure of the game looks much similar to the previous version. I have intentionally tried to keep the changes as minimum as possible so that you can easily compare them with the previous code. For example, all the core game logic is inside the game directory. All the overlay widgets are inside the widgets directory and all the data classes are inside the models directory. So let's start with the main.dart file. Here in the main method, just like the old code, I have performed some initial setup for the game and hive before the game starts. One important change that I have done here is, I have used the hive generator package to automatically generate hive adapters for model classes. This makes it much easier to store and read objects of those classes from Hive boxes. I have used Hive adapters for my other game Space Escape as well. So if you don't know how to use Hive generator, you can watch the video linked in the top right corner. Next, after all the initialization, you'll find the main game widget. This class is exposed by Flame Engine, which adds any Flame game to the Flutter widget tree. And you'll find that I have used the loading builder property of game widget to display a linear progress indicator while the game is still loading all the assets. Then I have used the overlay builder map which registers all the overlays that will be used in this game. And this is one major thing that I have changed compared to the old version. In this version, my flame game is always in the widget tree. In screens like main menu, settings menu and pause menu are all displayed as an overlay on top of the flame game. In my opinion, this makes the code much cleaner and easier to maintain. And finally, I've set main menu as the initial active overlay. So the next natural file to look at would be the main menu.dart file. But there isn't anything interesting to talk about here. It's just a normal widget displaying a game title, a play button and a settings button. In fact, all the overlay widgets are very similar in structure. Anyways, if you are watching a video on how to make games using Flutter and Flame, I assume that you already are smart enough to understand these widgets, so I won't go into much details here. Moving along, next we have this core Dino Run game class inside the Dino Run .dart file. In this class, you'll find a method called onload. This method is responsible for loading all the assets and initializing the game world. This method is the one on which loading builder widget waits before displaying the flame game. In this method, I've added the code to read persistent data stored in Hive, initializing the audio manager, setting the viewport to a fixed resolution, and then creating some initial components. The important thing to note here is the use of fixed resolution viewport. This allows us to set a rectangular visible area for the game world which will be independent of the screen size. Using this saves us from overriding on-game resize method and manually resizing each component. Next, we have the start gameplay method, which just adds the already created dino and enemy manager component to the game world. This method exists because we don't want to add these components right at the start of the game. Initially, only the parallax component will be visible along with the main menu overlay on top of it. And only after user presses play, dino and enemy manager component will be added to the game. 
exactly opposite to this we have the reset method this method removes all the other components from the game world except the parallax component it is called when game is over paused or restarted rest of the methods in this class are pretty much simple the only odd thing you'll find here is the on tap down method in here i call the jump method on dino only if the head overlay is active i've done this because on tap down gets called irrespective of the state of game like it will get called even when the game is over or is paused so to make the dino jump only when the game is playing i've added this check as head will be active only when the game is in playing state next let's take a look at the dino class instead of extending animation component this class now extends the sprite animation group component this component allows us to provide a map of animations while construction and then we can change the current animation to any of those animations using key of the animation map So here you'll find that I have created a static map for all the animations from Dino sprite sheet. Next, I've used the on mount method of this class to add a hit box for this component. This allows us to use the built-in collision detection system of Flame. If you don't know about this, you can watch my video on the same topic from the Space Escape series. But the basic idea is to add some hit boxes to components and then get notified about the collisions via the on collision method. So if you look at the on collision method for this class you can see that I have made sure that the other colliding entity is of enemy type and then called the hit method Next the enemy and enemy manager components are very similar to the original version the only major difference is with the enemy class just like dino it also gets a hit box but as there is nothing special that I wanted to do when it collides with other components I didn't override its on collision method. So this completes major changes in the core game classes. Next up, we have the three model classes. These are enemy data, player data and settings. Except enemy data, the other two are derived from change notifier with hive object mixin. Enemy data basically stores all the necessary details to spawn an enemy. Some of its members might have changed but it still operates in pretty much the same way as the old version next player data stores details like remaining lives high score and current score of player out of which only high score is persistently stored in hive and finally setting stores the toggle values for sound effects and background music in hive so these are all the major changes that i feel were important to mention in this video But if you still have some doubts about anything in this new code, feel free to contact me on my Discord server or start a discussion on the GitHub repository. All the links are given in the description. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.